Amen. So now we're going to do a little recap on last week's sermon. Last week we talked about, um, what was it called? Be at peace, live peaceably with all men. Amen. And we said that after lockdown, there will be vaccinated Christians and unvaccinated Christians, but don't take the bait. They're trying to start some sort of uh, biracial sort of uh, animosity, one of the other, trying to get one group scared of the other and the other group scared of the other. But when we come out of lockdown, just remember, we got to be kindly affectionate to one another. We got to live peaceably with all men, because no matter whether we're vaxxed or unvaxxed, we're all humans. Amen. So let's not take the bait. Let's not follow the narrative of the government or of the media. And let's just be Christian. Amen. So again, we are welcoming today a very special group. The Pentecostals of Hornsby have joined us. And I'm so glad to have you all joining us today. I want to give honor to Brother Noah and Brother Saniyala, Sister Anna, uh, Brother Bill Nakalta, members of the committee. And also a shout out to some of my good friends. I see that Sister Asala has logged on and... Um, and uh, checking to see if maybe Brother Mikhail Cruz will be checking in. And also my really good friends, Mary and Josese. Amen. Lanyon. So just really, and there's so many more, but those are the ones I know by name. Um, forgive me for leaving you out if I left you out. But just, we're just so glad to have you with us today. And we pray that you'll get a blessing um, being with Northern Beaches Pentecostal Church. And, uh, and again, this church is very special to me because I was very good friends with your pastor, Brother Joe, and so this is my special gift to Brother Joe, and, and I pray that you will, um, yeah, just continue, you know, to pursue, push on as a church, amen, with the fervor and the zeal and the desire and the direction that he gave you, amen, and I pray that we'll make him proud, amen, until we get to see him again face to face. So, amen, but now we're going to transition to the sermon and I want to open in prayer. This sermon is called The End is Just the Beginning. Because we're going to go through several stages in life. And, you, and you, we might think of life as being in one stage. We're always in at least one stage, right? We're in one stage. And we often think that this stage is the only stage. And if it's a pleasant stage, you're happy. If it's an unpleasant stage, we get extremely unhappy because sometimes we feel like this is going to go on forever. But it's not. Every stage comes. This too shall pass. I think that phrase appears 365 times in the Bible, if I'm not mistaken. And so, you know, every day, the, every day, whether you're having a good day or having a bad day, it's going to pass. Don't try to hang on to it. Don't try to flee from it. Let it be what it is. Let it have its ministry in your life and learn to be content. And we're going to go to Romans chapter 10. So if you have your Bibles, you can grab it. I am going to also share the scriptures on the screen, but it's always good to bring your Bible to the lounge when you're having church online. Amen. And uh, that way you can underline things and you can circle things and you can take notes in your Bible. And I think it's very important to keep our Bibles uh, busy. Keep your Bibles busy in lockdown. Amen. So we're going to go to Romans chapter 10. I'm going to read the first passage and then we're going to open in prayer. And he says in verse 1, he says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. This is Paul. He says, you know what? I came out of Ju the Judaism. It was a great experience, but boy, these people need what we have in Jesus. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, are going up um, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth and that word end is going to be brought up several times in this sermon okay Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes and for this first stage of life I'm going to be talking about maybe this is you maybe you're in this first stage of life I want you to be alert um, I want to show you how to get to the end of that. Amen. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for today, for bringing all of our brothers and sisters together from across the state, Lord Jesus, and who knows who's watching abroad through Facebook. 
And we thank you for the Pentecostals of Hornby, Hornsby joining us today, Lord God. The, we've been a close church, Lord God. They've been to Newcastle. They've visited Newcastle. And, and we've enjoyed their pastor preaching for us. And, and we've had, I've, I've preached for them several times. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for this relationship we have with a great Pentecostal church in the area. We pray, God, that the lockdown will be loosed so we can go back into our neighborhoods and begin aggressively evangelizing and trying to win souls. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll bless this sermon, Lord God, that all of us will find ourselves somewhere in this sermon and we'll find out what our purpose is and what our job is. And I pray that we'll find serenity and peace in, in whatever stage of life that we're in, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus, to do this stage right so we can move on to the next stage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in this first passage of Romans chapter 10, Paul talks about the Jews. Now, he doesn't know. I mean, this guy, yes, he was there. He was traveling the Roman Empire. And he can see from city to city, there were Jewish communities popping up all over. Whenever the Jews would, would leave Israel, they wanted to hold on to their faith. They wanted to hold on to their tradition. And whenever they got 10 families together, they would start a synagogue. And so, of course, that would mean they would have to live together. There would always be that Jewish section of town, you know. And, um, and so they were everywhere. And I'm sure that he was inspired that the Jews can congregate and thrive in whatever environment they go to. But he doesn't know the half of it. Because you know what we are? We're 2,000 years later, and you cross the world, and there are Jews thriving everywhere. They have, they have this, this keeping power about them. You know, they have a zeal of God for us, for them to last. If, think about this. This is mind boggling. For 1,850 years, they were kicked out in 135 AD and they came back in 1948. So maybe about maybe 1,800 solid years, they were without a country. These people were kicked out of their country and they were scattered upon the face of the earth, going from village to village and they survived and they're still here. And then they come back to their land and they thrive. Now, of course, maybe two thirds to three fourths of Israel today are atheists, but there's a lot of very grateful, religious, you know, um, observant Jews in Israel. And there's Jews in Sydney. There's Jews everywhere, and they're thriving. It's incredible. They have the zeal of God, amen, to live without a nation, strangers in a strange land. Often, they're treated like vermin. They were persecuted. They were mocked, and they were expelled, and they're still here. Incredible. Now, they show, this is inspiration, this zeal that they have. They, they show the value of masculine leadership. Now, I, I love ladies, and I appreciate the the strength that ladies have brought to Pentecost and that they've brought to Christianity. Because in our cultures, masculinity has taken a back seat. Women, they can't do everything by themselves. Amen. Don't expect your wives to teach the children about Jesus and then teach them how to pray and then read the Bible to them and then take them to church and then pray for them. You know, Christianity will fail. And in Europe, it already has failed. Because Christian men have failed. The Jews are inspiring because their men have been the leaders and they have been the leaders in the families and leaders in the community for values and priorities and faith. And we need to be inspired by the Jews men and rise up and be Christian strong men that we can survive through this terrible pandemic and other situations that are becoming in the future. Let us not continue this Western blasé selfish, useless, masculine role models being advertised in the world today. We don't need anything to do with that. I mean, we need to be inspired by the Jews. They have a zeal of God. It's a beautiful zeal, but it's not enough to have zeal. You've got to have truth. And we're going to talk about getting a hold of that truth. Now, God is not finished with the Jews. Not yet. There are many great things that the Jews are going to do in the end times. You know, they will be the great evangelists. They're going to lead the rebellion against the Antichrist. In fact, in the millennium, all Jews will be saved. Well, maybe at least a good 95% of them. This is going to be a miraculous time. Amen. So God's not finished with the Jews. However, Paul did mention in this passage that they are ignorant of God's righteousness. Now, that's a terrible thing. 
Jesus has come and the Torah is now obsolete. He says the end of the law, Christ is the end of the law. The Greek word is telos, which means it's a termination, it's a stopping point. But Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. And then when we believe on Jesus, not just believe in Jesus, but when we believe on Jesus, we receive that high level of moral perfection according to the law. Because Jesus did all the thou shalt's. And you didn't do any of the thou shalt nots. And then when we become a Christian, we have his righteousness imputed upon us. It's the righteousness of Christ. When God looks at us, he sees the righteousness of Christ. The age of the law is over, yes. But the holiness of the law and the power of the law lives on in us. Amen. So they're ignorant of God's righteousness. He says, oh, I would just love to see these people all come to Jesus. Now, if you're not a Christian, if you're in this stage you might as well be a Jew. Not that being a Jew is bad, but, but these people here are simply ignorant of God's righteousness. If you're not a Christian, you are ignorant of God's righteousness. Now, here's an interesting thing. We all have a conscience. You might have, this, you might have noticed that when you were a child, how you automatically knew you were doing wrong when you lied. You knew you were doing wrong when you stole. You knew you were doing wrong when you hurt others. But you did it anyways because there was something else inside of us. Maybe you, just, maybe you noticed that one too. It's called the sinful nature. So we have the sinful nature inside us. It's called the law of sin by Paul in, Acts, in Romans chapter 8. But it's, it's this propensity in our flesh to do bad things. Everyone grows up and does bad things. We have this conscience saying what's right and not to do bad. And then we have this other thing inside us that says, let's do bad. Okay. And it's a crazy thing. So we, our conscience is kind of like the 10 commandments. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. And we have just enough knowledge of right and wrong to be sent to hell for our sins and our disobedience. Amen. We don't need to hear the Bible to go to hell. All we have to do is break the Ten Commandments that's been written on our hearts and what we call the conscience. Now the good news is that Jesus is the end of the law. Okay, if you're living like Paul was living, Paul said, I think it was in Romans chapter 7, he said, you know, I want to do what's right and I find that I don't do it. I don't want to do what's wrong and I find that I'm always doing it. He says, what's going on? Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And then he says, thanks be to God who gives me the victory. Okay, so Jesus Christ is the end of that frustration and that confusion. Amen. And when you do that, when you decide, okay, I'm finished with this life. I am ready to give my life to Jesus. It's not that you believe in Jesus, but you're ready to believe on Jesus. Believing on Jesus is something that you do. It's an act of obedience on top of your faith. Because remember, faith without works is dead. So you need to make that decision to follow Jesus today and let Christ be the end of the law to you. 2 Corinthians 6.2 says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. If you have never given your life to Jesus, today is the day where you need to surrender and say, Lord, I'm finished with this life. I am ready to come to you and I'm ready to have deliverance and salvation. Amen. And you can pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will uh, accept me, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will, you will soften my heart, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will put your laws inside me. I pray, God, I want to surrender my life to you. And I, I promise to be baptized in Jesus' name, to have my sins washed away. I'm going to trust you and you alone to save me, Lord God. I'm going to trust you to get rid of my sins in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you can pray a prayer like that, if your heart can cry out and say, I am finished with this life. I'm ready to receive life in Jesus. I'm ready to receive forgiveness in Jesus name. I'm ready to receive new life. Then this, then Christ can be the end for you. Amen. He can be the end of the law. If you make that decision with me today, this will be the end of your confusion, the end of your lost stumbling, the end of guilt and condemnation, because you know you haven't been living the way you should be. You know you've been violating God's laws, and it can be the beginning of life. So again, the end is just the beginning. Amen. So if that's you, this can be your 
end and this can be your new beginning. We'll arrange, contact us and let us know you've made that decision so we can baptize you in Jesus' name to have your sins removed. Amen. You make that decision, but you can't pray for sins to be forgiven. But we'll show you later on that the only way to have sins forgiven is to be baptized. So I'm going to go and read now from Romans chapter 10 again. This is going to be part two. Okay, this is for those who have, who have gone beyond that. They, Christ has become the end of the law for them. We're going to go to verse 5. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law, that the man who does these things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this way. Say not in your heart who shall ascend to heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. But what does the word say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Amen. And so, in verse 9, you got there? Sorry. Okay, now, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Remember, it doesn't say in him. Anyone can believe in him. The devil believes in him. But you have to believe on him. And we're going to show you how to do that. For Twelve. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So once you have decided to put an end to your dead life without Jesus and receive God's righteousness, the adventure of the born again experience awaits you. Okay. I remember that, that stage where I was in that stage of now, okay, I'm a believer, and now I'm ready to, to submit to the born-again experience, okay? We have people ready to be baptized as soon as lockdown ends, and you can join them. Amen? You can join them. Now, we read in verses 5 to 13 about salvation. Now, remember, New Testament salvation is not just a conversation. You can't pray to be saved, but it is a covenant. We, you need the word of faith. Now, that word is not logos. That word is rhema. That's the word, the spoken word, the word of faith, where your heart cries out to God and the same rhema word where your mouth cries out to God. Amen. And when you do that, your sins can be forgiven. But how do we do this? Don't get me wrong. You can't simply ask God to forgive your sins. Many people get that idea when they read these verses. And, but the Romans who read this book, when Paul wrote it to them, knew exactly what Paul meant because they had already been born again themselves. Let's take a look at that verse again, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now it looks like, doesn't it, if you confess, oh yeah, Jesus, I believe in Jesus. And if you believe in your heart, then you'll be saved. For with the heart man believes under righteousness, unto the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But we have to understand that in 1 Peter 3.21, the Bible says, Baptism doth also now save us. So how does baptism work in with this? Well, you have to think about it, and many people don't. That's why people are running around with this sinner's prayer of salvation. We read about salvation in the epistles. But we see salvation in the book of Acts. In other words, if you want to see how this is done, let's go to the book of Acts and see how you confess and how you believe and how you're saved. So we go to Acts chapter 8. Okay. And here is salvation explained. This is, this is the same principles are applied right here. You'll see how they applied the principles of confessing and believing before a person gets saved. In verse 35, Philip opened his mouth to the, he was with the Ethiopian eunuch and began at the same scripture. He was reading Isaiah 53 and he preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the son of God. So he believed in his heart he confessed with his mouth, and Philip commanded the chariot to stand still, 
and went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. So as you can see, we, before we baptize people, we ask for a confession of faith. We want to know that the heart is fully in, in belief, and so we ask for a confession of faith. And if, if we're believing that person sincere, if they say, yes, I believe, if they say it and we're convinced that their heart's also believing it, then we can baptize them. So again, that's what, that's what they're talking about in Romans. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you, you shall be baptized. And by being baptized, you'll be saved. For with the heart man believes, and with the mouth confession is made. And you might remember, Romans 10, 13, just a few verses down, says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, it doesn't just mean calling as in praying, but we call. How do we call upon the name of the Lord? We do that in baptism. Remember Acts twenty two sixteen. 16. This is the demonstration of salvation. Ananias asked the apostle Paul, he says, And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. That's what baptism is. Baptism is calling on the name of the Lord. So when Paul says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, he's talking about those who are baptized shall be saved. Okay, that's how sins are forgiven. But you can see how easy it is for, to make that mistake when you read these passages to say, oh, that sounds like all you got to do is believe in Jesus with your heart. In other words, you have a change of mental knowledge and make a confession with your mouth and boom, you're saved. I can see how they can make that, that um, they can make that mistake if they don't consult the book of Acts, which shows us over and over a demonstration of salvation. Otherwise, if you try to have this as a plan of salvation and Acts is showing you salvation, you've got a Bible with two different salvation plans in it. It can't be happy. It can't be right. So this stage here we're talking about. Remember, the first stage was you were in darkness, you were ignorant of God's righteousness, and now in this stage we are pursuing God's plan of salvation, the born-again experience. It's not usually a five-minute thing. Usually it's, 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 it can be anywhere from, from an hour or two to six months. Some people take a while to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But when you have repented of your sins and you've been baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins and you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you may think to yourself, well, whew, I did it. I finished the salvation plan. I have reached the end. There is nothing more to do to be saved. I have completed my goal. Amen. You might say, bring up the logo again. The end is just the beginning. Amen. So again, when you are fully born again, it doesn't mean it's over. You can go back to your normal life now, citizens. It means now, yes, true. There's nothing more you can do to be saved. But guess what? God's got work for you. He's got a plan for you. Amen. There are things to do. And that means that there's more adventure. You don't need to make up and generate your own drama and your own adventure. God has an adventure just for you. We're going to go to part three and we're going to go back to Romans chapter 10. And we're going to go to verse 14 this time. How then shall they call on him? I mean, here we are talking about people getting born again and excited about that. But he says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, that bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So congratulations, Christian. You have been promoted. Amen. You are now an ambassador. That has a classy sound, doesn't it? You're an ambassador. You are a minister of reconciliation. And you are a witness of God's transforming power. And honest, some of this will just happen naturally. When you allow God to, to change you and, and to mold you into his image, when you read the Bible and just begin living it, the people who knew you are going to recognize you're not the same you. They're going to recognize there's somebody else living inside that carcass. Somebody better. <laughs> You've got Jesus in your heart. And, and they're going to notice it if you're doing it right. Now, if you don't read your Bible and if you don't pray and if you don't grow, if you just keep on being you, then you are going to have stagnated growth. Amen. And you're, and you're going to 
not be a, min, a, a witness, but we need to be witnesses. We need to allow God to transform us into his image. Amen. And by doing that alone, we'll be a witness. But on top of that, we can use our mouth and we can be ministers of reconciliation. We can be ambassadors for Christ. Now, don't forget, our church has a mission. I don't know about the uh, Pentecostals or Hornsby, but we have a mission that says we are introducing people to the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, think about that. Introducing people to the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, introducing people does not mean we chase people. Okay, we can chase people. We don't chase people, but we just tell them why they need to be saved. We let them know, listen, your sins are the problem. We've all had sins and we've dealt with our sins through Jesus. You need to have your sins dealt with through Jesus. We tell them why. We don't chase them. Also, we don't even save people. We don't. We can't. We just tell them how to get saved. We introduce them to the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, we want people to get saved, but there is a process. Now, let's take a look at what we can do as a process to get people onto stage two. Amen. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 10 one more time. Um, starting in verse 14, and then we're going to talk about it. How then shall they call on him? That's what we want. We want them to call upon him. We want people to be baptized. How shall they be baptized if they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they preach? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? So how shall they preach except they be sent? Well, we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up, okay? Have we been sent? Yes, we have. Jesus said, go. In Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. Now, you haven't been told to wait. You've been told to go, okay? So let's, let's, let's run for it. You haven't been told to think about it. You've been told to go. You haven't been told to worry about it. You've been told to go. Now, I know that people can be a little nervous. What if, I, what if I talk about Jesus and then they hate my guts? Or what if I ask them and they say, no, that'd be so sad. I'll feel rejected. What will it do to our relationship? And honest, have people ever asked you to join a pyramid company? You know, they probably have. Did it ruin your relationship? It probably didn't, okay? Now, I know that some people think that Jesus is not a popular product because this world is very worldly and they don't value the things that we value. And so you might think that they're going to think you're extremely square or they might think that you're bossy or pushy or they might even impose the feelings that maybe you're some sort of bigot. You might fear all of those things. You might be thinking about all that. You might be worrying about all that. But honest, you haven't been told to think or worry. You've been told to go. And, and not even think of who you're going to witness to. Should I witness to this person? That person's so busy, and this person's so, um, this person's a girl, and I'm a guy, and this person here is a businessman, this person's my boss. And, and you can think of a good reason why not to witness to people in your immediate environment. But you haven't been told to think about that. You know what they did? They did a thing called broadcasting. Now, we use broadcasting for radio now, because when you send radio out, you broadcast it. It just goes everywhere. And wherever there's a radio, it'll pick it up. And you, you know, the farmers would get a big bag of seed. They would grab a handful of seed and just broadcast it. You know, we would call it throwing. But they call it broadcasting. It would just throw it and throw it. Now, yeah, some seeds would fall on the stony rocks, and some seeds might fall among the thorns, and some th seeds might fall on the, uh, the, the, on the hard ground. There's all kinds of, there's going to be lots of seeds lost. But when you broadcast, guess what? There's going to be a lot of seeds saying yes. And so we had to, we, we're, we've been told to go. We've been commissioned to go. We've been promoted to go. I want to encourage you, start opening your mouth. Amen. Start opening your mouth and telling people about Jesus. Now, once we go, we're going to step back. We've been, we're sent. Yes. Now, once we go, we must preach. Now, that doesn't mean you need to be preaching like a pastor or preaching like an evangelist in the workplace, but it does mean to proclaim. It means to publish news aloud. It means to be a herald of good news to the uninformed. Amen. Anyone and everyone can do this. And guess what? God wants everyone to do this. 
Today, I gave the 20th way on how you can share the good news. I've been sharing different ways through the year. Our 20th way just made it to the screen today. We talked about just uh, posting a sermon. Take Sunday's church sermon, post it on your page so that all of your surrounding friends will see what you're into and they'll be able to listen in on it. And they'll, I'm hoping they'll listen in on it and they might make comments and you can get conversation started. Again, salvation usually begins with a conversation. Proclaiming is usually a conversation. Sometimes we have to work our way into the conversation. Some people make the mistake of waiting for the other person to bring up the topic of God. And it can be a long time before some people talk about God, unless they're swearing. So we need to make sure that we get that conversation started and see if we can start it in a positive way. Like we talked about asking people, what do you think happens when you die? Or share a Christian song. What do you think of this Christian song? Or post a sermon. What do you think about this sermon? Listen to what he said at the 20 minute mark about blah, 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 you know, and give again. It's all about starting conversations because when people interact with the word of God, something special happens and it's called hearing. The next step is called hearing. Now, this is not normal hearing as in I heard what you said because they heard what you said when you said it. But there's a certain thing that comes up called hearing. And I'm going to come back to this hearing. I'm going to cover that last. Okay, I'm going to skip the hearing stage. So it says, they be sent. We're going back. They can't preach unless they've been sent. And we went back and we talked about hearing. And now we're going to go to believing. Okay, once they hear, they believe. I'm going to come back to hearing. Okay, it's, it's not what you think it is. Now, believing, I assure you, is a miracle. Honest, believing is supernatural. When a person interacts with the word of God and they say yes, no matter how much intensity they put into it, no matter how much, um, no matter how much is truth is involved in their application of this, it's a supernatural gift. When a person repents, it's a supernatural gift. The Bible mentioned that many times over, that God calls and he gives people the ability to respond and when they respond, it's not natural, it's supernatural. So, believing is when that rhema word of faith in the heart is fired up, and the believing is not just acknowledging Jesus exists, but believing is recognizing that you're a sinner. Amen. That rhema word in your heart says, I'm a sinner, I, I believe, I confess it, and I believe that Jesus died for my sins, and I believe in God's plan to remove my sins by baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. So you have that Rima faith in your heart. And then once you believe, then you can call. Amen. What does it mean to call on God? That's right. That's water baptism. That's how people um, have this, the blood of Jesus applied to their hearts. And that's how their sins are forgiven. That's actually a topic from last year's theological symposium. These are very practical things you're learning at the symposium. So the Rima word of faith, which filled the heart, now reaches the mouth as they exclaim, I believe, and then we can dunk them in Jesus' name. Amen. That is the goal. The goal is to be saved. The goal is to be baptized. Amen. How shall they call unless they believe? How shall they believe unless they hear? And how shall they hear unless someone preach? And how shall they preach unless they be sent? Okay, so we have been sent, and you need to open up your mouth and you need to do your work. And when you do your part, God will do his part. You need to have confidence in the word. Now, when you open your mouth, don't just say, my pastor says this, my pastor teaches this, and my friends believe this, and my parents believe that. Your best weapon, if you want to change people's lives, if you want to promote them to the next level, if you want to help them, you need to quote the scripture. The scripture is not just lucky. The scripture is the word of life. The scripture is the word of God. It's power. And it's, it has life-changing power. So you need to be sharing scripture. That's why I, need, I, rec I recommend you memorize scriptures and ask your friends to help you to check to make sure you have it down word perfect. They have to read it and listen to you and they're getting that scripture into their heart. It's not just lucky, it is powerful, amen? So we've been sent to preach the gospel to everyone. Now let me recap with Romans 10, 17, our last verse for today. He's talking about hearing again here in verse 10, 17. He says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
Now, it doesn't mean hearing the word of God, but hearing by the word of God. Now, I'm talking about that in this year's theological symposium. It's called prevenient grace. Okay, hearing. When you read about hearing in, in Romans chapter 10, this is that prevenient grace that awakens a dead man spiritually. Because honest people, before they come to Jesus, they are spiritually dead. Spiritually dead and condemned for hell. And they have a conscience which is telling them right from wrong. It's not got enough content to get them saved, but enough content to let them know they're doing wrong. And they have a sinful nature that wants to do wrong. Okay, they have everything in them to condemn them. But when we expose them to the gospel of Jesus Christ, they come alive for a brief moment. The Lord gives them hearing and he can hear God calling, kind of like Isaiah. Remember in Isaiah chapter 6, he says, I was in the, I was in the, the temple and, uh, and I walked in and I, I walked into the presence of God. And I said, oh, I'm a wicked man. I'm a sinful man. And he says, an angel came and, and touched a coal to my lips and says, your sins are forgiven. And he says, then I can hear a voice saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? Who will I send and who will go for us? And he said, send me. It's in a similar way. A person is living their life and a Christian comes along and shares the word of God. Something comes alive in them. It's called hearing. And they're able to respond now like they've never been able to respond and say yes. Because honest, whenever a person is not exposed to the word of God, they, they can't choose Jesus. They can't. They're just, all they can choose is, is sin. The Bible says all of our righteousness, the, the best that we've ever done out of, outside of Christ is like filthy rags. But when we are exposed to the word of God, God gives us a chance. He awakens us. And says, will you accept? And that's called a hearing. Faith comes by hearing. When you have that hearing, you can then choose faith. Or you can choose to go back to your dead life. Choose faith or go back to your dead life and act like it's just a big lie. And then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can choose faith. Amen. And then you can choose to follow Jesus into the waters of baptism and have your sins forgiven. This is powerful, incredible stuff. Amen. This hearing. That's why I try to share the word of God on Facebook as much as possible. It may be that God might awaken someone's spirit briefly when they read a scripture on my thing and they'll say, yes. You know what happened to me? My brother came to visit me one time when I was a little pagan and he was talking to me and my sister about Noah's Ark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that that's not convicting but i he was just talking to us about like noah's ark like it was a real story and i never treated it like a real story because i was you know supposed to be a worldly modern arrogant type but that message of noah's ark stirred my heart i went upstairs and i chose faith it's incredible all he did was tell me the story just we talked about noah's ark for a little bit and that by hearing the word of God, I received hearing. And I went to my bed and I chose faith. Now, it was a couple years before I got baptized in Jesus' name, but I had faith. I had repentance. Okay, And you might know lots of people who have repentance, but they haven't been baptized properly in Jesus' name. Now, that might be you. If that is you, then you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. That's how you get the blood of Jesus applied. The blood of Jesus is in the name of Jesus. And... And that's how you get the blood applied, because when we baptize you in Jesus' name, we're going to be invoking the name of Jesus, which brings the blood. Amen. And, you, and when the blood and faith meet obedience, sins are forgiven. Okay, so I'm going to encourage you to take advantage of that. Okay, there's three stages we talked about. The first stage was living in sin, ignorance of God's righteousness. And if you will choose Jesus today, if you, you have hearing now, probably, and you have a chance now to say yes, in an hour and maybe in two hours in a day, when the memory of this fades, your hearing will go and you'll go back to your life and you'll be unable to make a decision for Jesus, unable to make a decision for faith. But today, if you will hear, now is the day and now is the time of salvation. You can choose to say yes. And then Christ can be the end 
of the law for you. Amen. And the end will bring a new beginning, the born again experience. And then after you complete the born again experience and you think, wow, I've done it. I'm in. I'm saved. Oh, it's all done. No, then you discover you got promoted. Amen. You got promoted to becoming an ambassador, a minister of reconciliation, um, and a witness to the life-changing power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so again, now that with that ministry, there is no end. Amen. And then we do that until we die. And guess what? That end is just another beginning. So I hope that you'll find yourself in one of these three stages. Either you're in sin looking to get out, or you're in the, you're in the born again process, going about repenting of your sins, getting baptized in Jesus' name, and praying for the refilling of the Holy Spirit. Or you are now pursuing souls on a mission to win people to Jesus before the devil gets his claws in too deeply. This is our opportunity. We have incredible media to reach everybody. We've got telephones, we've got Facebook, we've got email. We can reach so many people. This is incredible that the devil should allow us to have so much access to technology. Amen. And that we can even be sharing church services together. This is all so good. And we're not we're not boycotted yet. We haven't been banned yet. So we need to take advantage of this, brothers and sisters. We could be living in China, okay, where they are actively watching everything that we're doing. Right now, they're only watching us on Facebook and, and fact checkers are persecuting us. But that's about as bad as it goes. It could be worse. But while we have the freedoms we have, let's do this. Amen. Let this be an inspiration to you. Let's go ahead and reach out for souls. Let's reach out for people. Let's let's share that life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, and let's begin this week. Amen. I, I, rewind the sermon. Look at lessons, reasons number 18, 19, and 20 on what you can do. And try to do all of them. Let's try to do all of them. And now you know the, the year is winding up. Now we began a year with a bucket list, 2021. Now we're not going to die in 2021, but 2021 is going to finish one way or the other. Have you made a list of what you wish to accomplish in 2021? If not, let me give you the three-month challenge. Let's do the three-month challenge bucket list. What things would you like to do? Would you like to witness to someone? Would you like to witness to someone to the point where they got baptized in Jesus' name? Would you like to pray for someone until they got the infilling of the Holy Ghost? You know, in three months, you could easily read the New Testament. You can challenge yourself. You know, my three-month challenge, my bucket list for 2021, before this year finishes, I'm going to read the New Testament. You can do that. If you haven't done that yet, you ought to. Amen. So there's lots of things you can do. I pray that you'll challenge yourself because if you aim for nothing, I guarantee you, you'll hit it. But if you'll aim for a couple things, aim for a couple incredible things you can do for Jesus depending on what stage you're in. If you make some commitments today, right now, then you'll accomplish something. You might not accomplish everything, but you'll accomplish something. You'll make progress. Let's do that, shall we? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together, Lord. Thank you for having the Pentecostals of Horns be joined us today, Lord God. It was good to enjoy their company during the worship, and it was good to have their company today during the sermon. I pray that they also will find themselves gainfully employed in whatever stage they're in now, Lord. They'll recognize where they are in every stage and they'll pursue God's call for them. And I pray, Lord God, that our churches as well, Lord God, will rise up. Help us to shake off those shackles of slumber the devil wants to keep putting on to us. Help us to shake it off and fan that fire and keep our fire alive. And help us, Lord Jesus, to serve you with everything we have. Help us to find out where we are and help us, Lord Jesus, to do what we ought to do. Amen. Let's be faithful witnesses, faithful servants. Let's seek the Lord with all of our heart. And let's seek salvation, Lord God. Let's do it the biblical way. And then trumpet that message everywhere we go. Because the time is running short. And we need to redeem the time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, God bless you guys. It was so good to... See everybody. Amen. I'll be looking at the comments and that'll be my way of seeing you. You've seen me and I'll be reading the comments just to hear what you've thought of the sermon. And I pray that you've been um, making comments and encouraging people because there's going to be others watching behind. More so than what I'm saying. So please always interact with the sermons. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Don't forget to attend more services during the week and connect with your brothers and sisters. Amen. God bless you.